Functions whose limits at a point can be found by direct substitution are called continuous at that point. Intuitively, continuous functions are the ones whose entire complete graph you can draw without lifting your pen, so the graph itself is a continuous line. But more precisely, we say that a function is continuous at the point a on the number line if the limit as x approaches a of f of x equals f of a. Notice how there are implicitly some important conditions baked into this definition. So these necessary conditions are the right hand side in that relation needs to be defined. So when you evaluate the function at x equals a, you have to get a sensible finite number. In other words, a needs to be in the domain of our function f. Second, the left hand side in the relation also needs to make sense. So the limit as x approaches a of f of x needs to exist. And third, the relation of course must also hold so that these two numbers that you get by taking the limit as x approaches a of f of x and evaluating the function as at x equals a, uh, they need to be equal. Now, if any of these conditions um, break down, then we say that the function is not continuous at x equals a, that it is discontinuous at a, or it has a discontinuity at a. This can happen in different ways depending on which condition breaks down. So let me show you an example now. Here you can see the graph of f in red and it has uh, several discontinuities at various points. The first one you can see at x equals negative 1. The function is not defined there, so it is the first condition that uh, um, breaks down. Negative 1 is not in the domain of our function, so it, it is not continuous at x equals negative 1. You see how there is a hole in the graph of the function. So this discontinuity type we call a hole discontinuity. And this is what we have at uh, x equals negative 1. Okay. Uh, second, at x equals 0 something else is happening. The function's graph makes a sudden discrete jump. So even though the function is defined there, we have 0 in the domain of the function. The first condition is met. The limit as x approaches 0 does not exist, so the second condition is not met because the one-sided limits do not match there. Because of the sudden jump that it makes there, we call this type of discontinuity a jump discontinuity. So this happens at uh, x equals 0 for our example. Now returning to the previous example, x equals negative 1, you might tell me that, hey, we can fix this. Let's just define the function at x equals negative 1. So let's assign a value to f of negative 1. But then I would tell you, well, we can do this in many, many ways. For example, I could be defining f of negative 1 to be 2 along the y-axis. And then we didn't solve the problem. I mean, we fixed condition 1. Negative 1 is now in the domain of our function and the limit still exists. But then condition 3 is not valid because the limit as x approaches negative 1 is not the same number as f of negative 1. Of course you would be telling me how I cheated and I should have uh, filled in that, that whole uh, discontinuity to make the graph of the function continuous at that point. And indeed uh, this is the reason why whole discontinuities are sometimes called removable discontinuities. Okay. Finally at x equals 2 we also see some weird behavior. The function is not defined there, so by condition 1 breaking down, it is discontinuous at x equals 2. But it is a, a important enough and interesting enough behavior so that it, we give it its own name. It's an infinite discontinuity for obvious reasons. At uh, x equals uh, 2, we have that. Um, the graph of the function blows up. Okay. Um, finally, uh, let me define what we mean by a continuity on an entire interval. We say that a function is continuous on an interval if it is continuous at every point in the interval. If the interval happens to be half closed or closed uh, with some endpoints included in the interval, then at the endpoints we need to take the appropriate one-sided limits in the definition of continuity. Okay, enough for now. Let's look at some questions. Use the graph to decide whether the function is continuous at the given point. So is it true or false that f is continuous at x equals 3? Pause the video and make your selection. Hope you paused it and have realized that it is false. The function has a discontinuity at x equals 3. Even though it is defined there and has a definite limit as x approaches 3, these two numbers, the limit and the value of the function, do not match. So it is not continuous at x equals 3. 
consider the function f of x defined in this piecewise way and determine the value of that number b uh, so that the function is continuous at x equals negative 1. Pause the video and input your answer in the box. Hope you paused it and have inputted 0. So you can get this by taking the limit as x approaches negative 1. You have to consider the limit of this expression as x approaches negative 1 and th then you get negative 1 squared plus 2 times negative 1 plus 1. Uh, that is 0 and that must be the value of the function at x equals negative 1. So that's why b needs to be 0. Next question. It's a similar one. f is defined in a piecewise way and we should determine the value of that number b so that f is continuous at x equals 2. Pause the video and input your answer in the box. I hope you paused it and have inputted negative 1 for b. So you can compute the value of the function at x equals 2 by looking at the first line. f uh, of uh, 2 is 5 to the 2 minus 2 that is 5 to the 0 that is 1. So the limit as x approaches 2 needs to be 1 as well. And for that, we only need to look at the second line now and take the right-hand limit. As x approaches uh, 2, we get 2 plus b. That needs to be equal to 1. That can be happen if only if uh, b is equal to negative 1. Next question. Here is a function f that is not defined at x equals 3. What should the value of um, f be at x equals 3 so that it becomes continuous at um, x equals 3? So pause the video and make your selection now. Hope you paused it and I have selected a 6 over 5 for the value we should define f of 3b and you can get this by simply computing the limit as x approaches 3 of f of x using factoring. Okay, um, select all intervals on which the following function is continuous and we have f of x be the square root of x minus 2. So pause the video and make your selection. Hope you paused it and have realized that the square root of x minus 2 is defined for all x for which x minus 2 is greater than or equal to 0 so that means that x needs to be greater than or equal to 2 and the second interval exactly corresponds to that uh, uh, possibility and the first interval is just a sub interval of the second one so that also is a, an interval of continuity okay i hope you enjoyed this video and i'll see you in the next one